Hello, my name is Robin Mendelson. I am currently a third year fellow in gastroenterology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Today, I am going to discuss my article, Carcinomatosis is not a contraindication to enteral stenting in select patients with malignant gastric outlet obstruction. Malignant gastric outlet obstruction, or GU, is seen as a late complication of many gastrointestinal cancers and other metastatic cancers and is associated with a tremendous amount of morbidity and reduction in quality of life. Surgical bypass used to be the mainstay for palliation, but most of these patients are quite ill and are therefore deemed poor surgical candidates and are left suffering at the end of their lives. Endoscopically placed self-expanding metal stents is now being offered as a less invasive alternative and has actually been shown to have multiple advantages over surgery, including increased clinical success, shorter hospital stay, reduced morbidity, lower incidence of delayed gastric emptying, and lower cost. There are a few contraindications to enteral stenting, including obvious signs of intestinal ischemia and perforation. But in addition, many consider carcinomatosis to be a relative contraindication to enteral stenting because of the theoretical risk of multifocal obstruction and that placing a stent may unmask distal obstruction. In fact, many review articles and technical papers actually list carcinomatosis as a relative contraindication to stenting. On review of the literature, however, there were no studies investigating whether carcinomatosis truly affects the clinical success of enteral stents. Therefore, this is a theoretical risk that has never actually been studied. Here at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, we have been placing enteral stents for malignant gastric outlet obstruction in select patients with carcinomatosis if on imaging it appears they only have one focus of obstruction that is amenable to a stent based on the size and location of the lesion. Because we had anecdotally noted a high success rate in these patients, we decided to perform this retrospective review of our experience. We suspected that our data would confirm our suspicion that carcinomatosis should not be a considered a contraindication. Over an eight and a half year period, a total of 192 patients had stent placed for malignant gastric outlet obstruction. Of these, 116, or 60%, had documented carcinomatosis either by CT scan or by pathology. Our technical success rate was high at 95%, which is consistent with the current literature that reports a technical success rate of 90 to 100%. When looking at clinical outcomes, we define clinical success as the ability to tolerate oral intake without vomiting, and we found similar clinical outcomes with rates of 81% in the group with carcinomatosis and 84% in the group without carcinomatosis. In both groups, there were similar re-intervention rates with 17 patients in each group requiring re-intervention. There were no statistically significant differences between the two groups with regards to clinical outcomes and re-intervention rates. The complication rate was also similar amongst the two groups with a major complication rate of 4%. To our knowledge, this is the first study to evaluate the effect of carcinomatosis on the clinical success of stents in palliation of malignant gastric outlet obstruction. We showed that early signs of carcinomatosis have no impact on clinical outcomes. Carcinomatosis, therefore, should not be considered a contraindication to enteral stenting in select patients with malignant gastric outlet obstruction unless there are signs of multifocal obstruction. We hope that this study will help change current practices so that palliative stents will be offered to patients not traditionally considered candidates for this procedure so that we can help patients suffer less and have a greater quality of life at the end of life.